to the webinar, The Influence of Framing on Attitudes Toward Diversity Training. The study was presented by Human Resource Development Quarterly in the fall of 2003. To begin, let's look at a brief agenda that will follow the webinar. First, an introduction in which we'll discuss two definitions. What is diversity training and what is framing? These two definitions will be very important in order to understand the context of the study. And then of course, the most important, a study overview. What is the study really about? The structure and execution of the study, three hypotheses that were posed by those executing the study, their results, implications, and a discussion for the class. To begin, the two definitions at hand are diversity training, training for employees to learn how to work effectively with those who are different from themselves, as this will lead to an increase in business success. Framing, a psychological device that offers a perspective and manipulates salience in order to influence subsequent judgment. A study overview. But before we get into what the study sought to determine, it is important to understand that the study looked at the attitude of individuals in a moderate sample to see based on A and B testing, how they would react to a proposed diversity testing, diversity training, I'm sorry. Uh, some would receive diversity training notification in a positive light, others in a negative. And there are also some other pieces that we will discuss um, that were framed differently for each group. As you can see below, by framing the content, training content, the course title, and training assignment, how would this influence participants' pre-training attitudes? We'll get into that a little bit more about how these three are changed throughout the framing process. Furthermore, how gender influenced his or her pre-training attitudes, how the training and participants' gender interact to affect pre-training attitudes. The study itself had 160 adults, 72 men, 88 women. Of those individuals, 124 were white, six were minority, and as discussed earlier, 30 were MBA students and 130 were organization employees. In order to gather these participants, recruitment was done through a set of emails sent to managers at several large metropolitan area organizations in which they gathered 130 individuals to participate. Additionally, students enrolled in an MBA course at a mid-sized university were selected. Those studying this topic felt MBA students as they were soon to be in organizational situations were perfect for this study as well. Upon agreeing to participate in this study, each participant would read a course description, including an introduction, course objectives, and a note to employees, followed by attitude and demographic questionnaires. To dive further into this, each participant that received these description, introduction, etc., was done by email and was looking at a diversity training opportunity. In this particular questionnaire, there were 23 items on a pre-training basis, i.e. before they go into diversity training to look at their attitude towards it, and they were all based on a five-point Likert scale. Some of the framing techniques that were used for the structure and execution of this study were one, training content framing. They were done in two separate ways, i.e. A-B testing. The first was narrow, a lecture on racial issues in the workplace, solely looking at one diversity issue. The second was broad, inviting people to attend a lecture on racial, gender, lifestyle, and personality differences in the workplace. As you can see, a broad topic, bunch of topics of diversity. The second of the structure was course title framing. The first was traditional diversity training. And the second that was used, comprehensive or building human relations. Then the final technique of framing was either remedial or advanced. For example, remedial was more or less 
After benchmarking with similar companies, we are well below average in turning individual differences into opportunities. For example, this means that the company isn't doing well or is being looked at in a negative light and must seek improvement versus receiving diversity training invite for advanced, i.e. after benchmarking, benchmarking with similar companies, we are well above the average in turning individual differences into opportunities. Advanced implicates that the individual is doing well and can do even better. After deciding upon the three different framing techniques, the studiers came up with three hypotheses that they felt may happen. The first one is that framing will have an effect on pre-training attitudes, specifically a broad focus, a comprehensive title, and an advanced assignment or a combination of these features will lead to a more positive pre-training attitude. The participant's gender will have an effect on pre-training attitudes. More specifically, they felt that females female participants will respond more favorably than men to a diversity training initiative. And lastly, the participants' gender and framing will interact to influence pre-training activities. Specifically, they note, men will respond more negatively than women in their pre-training attitudes to a frame with a more narrow focus, a traditional title, and a remedial assignment. So what happened? The study discovered that two out of three features, i.e. Uh, focus, assignment, and title being the features, had an influence on participants' perceptions. Male participants perceived greater organizational backlash and evaluated the organization less favorably than women. The studiers suggested that this may be because, may be because males are typically pointed out as not ha being as diverse as women, including some other activities that may come up such as um, sexual harassment or um, previous diversity trainings. Men were not as receptive as women were. They felt they were more or less attacked by receiving diversity training invite. More specifically, when we look at the context of how it was presented, Male participants perceived the most backlash when the training focus was narrow and the assignment was remedial. So more or less, if the training, if they were invited to this training and it was looked at in a negative light, they felt the most backlash. When vice versa, women perceived the most backlash when the focus was broad and the assignment was advanced. Therefore, women felt the most backlash when it was in a positive light. So what are the implications of these findings? I've mentioned here that it's extremely tricky when you're framing diversity training in a professional organization. Some of the things that must be considered are the cultural norms and gendered biases that affect the perception of the course training and the pre-training attitudes. So when framing diversity training invite or the content that is in the diversity training, there are many aspects that have to be considered and considered again, as well as the combination of different cultures and different genders that will be in the room and be receiving the pre-training activities as well as the actual activities. So I'd like to continue this discussion with you guys and get your opinions in the forums. So I've posed four different questions here for you to get your opinions. Have you ever participated in diversity trainings at your place of employment? What were your initial perceptions upon being invited? Let's get that population up on the participation. I would love to see what your attitudes towards it were. Why do you think there's such a discrepancy in the perception of these frames in men versus women? gender biases, culture? What do you think? Do you think if this study were conducted using additional me measures such as race or religion, would there be different results? Why? So what do you think that our results page would look like? And finally, if you had to develop a diversity training tomorrow, 
What framing techniques would you utilize from this example? I look forward to hearing your uh, thoughts on these questions in the discussion forums and continuing the conversation there. Thank you so much for listening and for your participation.